<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We back up in this thing. What's going on, people? What's up? What's up? What's up? You guys yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. We back up in this thing. What's going on, people? Okay. <laughs> you got a little feedback in the background. What's that? A little bit, little bit. We got it. We got it. It's okay, though. We good in there? I think we are. All right, that's what's up. All right, we want to welcome everybody to the King and I Life podcast. Welcome and back, I am Sun Soul Lex, and this is my co host, Miss. It's your girl, Phoenix. And your boy, so touch the poet up in this joint. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we are so happy to be with you guys tonight, and I think we got a pretty good topic tonight. Oh, Lord. But we got some we got heathenish behavior, I think you're talking about. Yeah, man, yeah. So you guys can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all of your major podcast platforms, and even on Amazon. We out here in these podcast streets. Yes, we are. Anyway, uh, if you guys want to be a, a, a guest on the show, if you have topic ideas, if you just want to say, hey, I like what you're doing, or you can improve on this, we are mature enough to take constructive criticism. So you guys can reach <laughs> us at K-I-N-G-A-N-D-E-Y-E-369 at gmail.com. Again, that is King and I 369 at gmail.com. Yes, Holla indeed. At Holla at us. So tonight's topic is, is it time to change the definition of marriage? Big <laughs> <laughs> boy going straight in with it. I mean. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm being uh, impolite there. So did you guys have anything y'all want to throw on the table before we get into this thing? Uh, I don't know. It. Um, <sighs> I don't think I have anything. I, well, what I need to say before we get started is we all three are either married or have been married. So this isn't coming from a standpoint. Um, this is this is coming from a standpoint of three people <laughs> who are either in it <laughs> or have been in it. So. Let's throw that disclaimer out there. We're not one of those don't have children, so why are we talking about children type of situation? <laughs> I'm glad you threw that yeah, disclaimer yeah. out there because, yeah, you know, you know how you be watching TV and stuff, you see, or, or we watching videos on YouTube, like, Joke ain't even married. Why are you talking about that? Right. You know what I mean? That's so. it. So the concept of marriage has evolved in many ways due to how society adjusts to the many exploration of freedom and expectations that people have. The status and title placed on relationships are no longer binding in the traditional sense with people treating marriage as either a business or convenience in order to adapt to individual needs. Mm. With, the, uh, with that being the case, has the definition of marriage become obsolete or are the values that have stood still viable? Ah, uh, man. Um, um, um. This is going to be a good conversation. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, because me, myself, I've done it three times. <laughs> Succeeded or failed, however you want to look at it. I've done it three times. So uh I'm definitely gonna have my opinions on it. All right. Okay. Miss Phoenix. Well, I have a I have a bronze medal and currently have a, a silver medal. So. <laughs> 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 so that's where I'm coming from. Uh son. Well, I, I am currently, I can be honest with the audience and say I'm married, and I'm sure you all know that. Um, I have been married for the last past 12 years going on, and I have been married uh, once as a practice before this. One. <laughs> 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 it was a practice. I, I found out exactly what I didn't want in a marriage. So. Oh, hey. man, this guy, this guy. He said once as a practice, so I guess... 
No, I ain't calling my first one practice. <laughs> <laughs> I was intentional, so I ain't say, I ain't going to say that was practice. Lightly. <laughs> Get yourself in any trouble on here. Oh, man. It's all good. It's all good. Y'all are funny. That particular Um, relationship I was in for, well, we known each other about seven years before mm. we actually got married. So, um, you know, things happen. It it just didn't work out once we said I do. When we said I do, that's when she said, I'm crazy now. So (laughs) that's what happened. Live your life, girl. Live your life. We good over here. I got questions. Go ahead. Go ahead. Shoot. All right. You said y'all knew each other for seven years before y'all got married. Yes, sir. Right? Yep. And then the crazy came out, right? Yeah. Just out of nowhere, right? Um, Did it really come out To that extent. To that extent. No, no, no. Let me get to my point. Now. He he. They knew each other seven whole years before they got married. Um, that kind of defeats a lot of people's arguments when they say, "Well, you got married too fast, and you really didn't know a person." This, that, and other. So, <laughs> if you can know someone seven years before you got married, and it didn't last forever, I need a lot of people out there to shut. Just be quiet. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, the, the thing about that marriage is, and again, no disrespect towards her. Um, I just think that when you love someone, you think you can love them past all of their pain issues. And in some cases, you just can't. And that's, you know, again, no disrespect towards her because I had my own issues. Mm-hmm. But, um, Anyway, I I think it was a great learning experience for the both of us to say, hey, this is what I can deal with, and this is what I can't deal with. (laughs) What I'm not going to deal with. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. But to this day, uh, we have no, you know, hard feelings towards each other. She's, you know, I don't know if she's married. No, I don't think she's married, but she's been in a very long-term relationship. Mm. Uh, from what I heard, anyway, we don't really keep in touch like that. So. Hey. Well, that kind of that's kind of steamrolling toward our first uh, bullet point here. Um, but I think that uh, I'm going to say from my first marriage, uh, we got married really young. Um, mm-hmm. We had we had a kid like bam like. Set our vows while my my belly was big. You know, it was a. This is what you're supposed to do. This is what you're expected to do. And at that time, we were so young. And honestly, um, my parents were married. Um, his mother was not. Uh, but he had. That didn't mean he hadn't seen his mother in um, a thriving relationship. Um, what I'll say is, uh, my parents, who are divorced now, um, mm-hmm. it wasn't the healthiest marriage. Um, we got to see the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, and I remember thinking, marriage is not this hard, but you have to sit down and have a discussion of what marriage is to you, with the person you are going to to be with, because ultimately, the two different views um, as as on top of our youth was the demise of my first marriage. However, that being said, we are the best of friends right now today. Um, I can call him and say, hey, I have an issue with X, Y, and Z. And it's not just because we have a kid together because it transcends the parenting realm. We are truly friends. Um, I feel like had we gotten to that and matured a bit more, we probably would have been able to have one of those lasting marriages um, right. because we truly look for the same things. It's just we were too young to really know what we wanted then. Um, life has been um, one of our greatest teachers. Um, I just feel like if we were a bit more seasoned in life, we wouldn't have had all the problems that we had. I will say that. Yeah. And, and I will piggyback um, with. It also depends when you're young, who the hell is around you, Um, because, you know, 
being young, getting married, having a child, and it's like, this is what we supposed to do. Then you have people around you who are counterproductive to that in all ways. And when I say always, I mean always like, you know, pit you against each other, uh, planting dirty seeds in each other's ears and heads. And you don't realize how much of an effect that a negative effect that has on you. Because you think those are your friends. You think they got you. You know, they think they, you know. So it, it definitely matters. That's a good point. For sure. So with that being said, uh, what is your definition of marriage? Yeah, I'm going to need y'all to go ahead and answer that first. <laughs> <laughs> Fun. <laughs> All right. So without looking it up in a dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> or the Bible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Those two things right there. Um, my my personal definition of marriage is um, just being able to love someone and have that person love you back. Being able to um, accept them as they are. Some would say flaws. Mm. Um, and being able to um, love them past and through the ups and downs of, of everything that life is going to throw at you, man, because I mean, let's 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 be honest about it. A lot of us have gone through a lot of things in our lives, <laughs> a lot of things. So by the time we are mature enough to even consider uh, getting married, we damn near done been through a couple wars, <laughs> a few scrimmages, a few battles, and so on and so forth. You know? Practice runs. Oh <laughs> <it>. man! <laughs> but uh, I think that marriage is a relationship that's going to keep uh evolving as time goes on you as individuals you're going to change you're going to uh, morph into to different people's meaning you're going to learn different things as life goes on so to say that someone's gonna continuously be the same person i think that's that's not a good idea of what your mate is going to be because they're always going to change it's just their principles and their values and who they are to the core those are the things that you need to hang on to and and realize you know no matter what happens they still got my back from dust to dawn you know what i'm talking about okay all right that's what's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm my sitting bad. here like oh, go, ahead. Ahead. go ahead go ahead man my bad my bad scratching on my eyes with this damn paper towel i need some tissue <laughs> 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 that's a great that's a what it is to you is a great thing it really is appreciate it but for me <laughs> oh, <laughs> Lord. he is wide open uh, I just don't think people should get married on the concept of love alone at all um, love is an emotion like anger and sadness it comes and it goes uh a lot of people have to realize that it is just an emotion. Um, you can love somebody and not be in love with them, and the way you handle them is completely different. Um, to love somebody through the ups and downs and through the flaws, as we say, um, I, that goes back to having that 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 real live conversation before you even get to marriage, because sometimes somebody is so hurt to their core about something that they've endured in the past and, mm -hmm. and you are steady fighting to love that person through all of that that you didn't cause and sometimes mm -hmm. trying to help somebody unpack all that baggage it sinks you um it, it changes who you are at your core um so you have to be careful um for me um for me when I say you shouldn't get married for love alone, it's got to be um, a, a, a partnership. Uh, people often say, oh, I married my best friend. And if, if that's true, that's great. Because if you're marrying your best friend, you love that person, but you also have a good fundamentally working relationship with that person. I hmm. think love muddles uh, relationships a lot because when you love and you fall in love, 
uh, you, you kind of put blinders on to people's stuff. And then once the, once you in it, like when you in the middle of it, then blinders come off and you really see somebody. And that's, that's a tough thing to deal with because it, it was always there. But because you were so in love, it, it didn't bother you as much. But right. when, when that love feeling starts to wear away and it's going to, and I don't care what you say or who you are, you're going to get to a point where it ain't all sunshine and rainbows. And you might look and be like, eh, you can't deal with this. <laughs> uh, I don't even want to try to deal with this. Oh, man. Um, but if you know who someone is from the very beginning, like not their representative, for the first mm. year or two when y'all on your honeymoon phase. I mean, that asshole is coming out the shower, scratching his ass and telling you, hey, I don't want to listen to you talk for the next 15 minutes. That person. That's the person you have to look at and be like, oh, or, <laughs> or that bitch <laughs> that's about to stroll up in the house with her bonnet on, sucking her nails, talking about something. I don't feel like cooking tonight. I, I ain't got it in me, so do you fend for yourself. Oh wow! It's it's those it's those people that you have to really be comfortable with, and I'm gonna tell y'all, I ain't got it in me to deal with, but so but so much. My patience is that thin mm. on certain things. So right. in order, and and it, it's not that I don't love you. It's just, I guess, plain and simple. Sometimes love just is not enough. I can love you, but it ain't enough for me to deal with you on a regular basis with your shenanigans. I just don't have that in me. Um, and I don't think I ever did. Like, uh, I think that if people continuously treated people how they want to be treated, marriages will work. Mm. But when you go in and you love somebody and, oh, this is the one, and mm, 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 when they wear off, though, what you got left? What do you really mm. have left? So for me, marriage is a contract with someone that you that you can build a business with. And if that yeah. business is life, then that business is life. But you have to you have to go into that with that mindset. This is a contract that I'm entering into because that's what marriage is. It's a contract. It's a piece of paper that legally binds you to someone else. It's what it is. Let's, well let's said, it. Queen. Well said. Um, so going into that. You can, can I look at your? Huh? <laughs> you still go? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, but going into that, you need to look. For me, you need to look at it as just that. We are here to build something, and can I can I continuously build with you without dissolving our our relationship? Um, and I want to I want to build with somebody that I, I can endure with, but also I can build something beautiful with. So we need to be looking toward the same. Uh, goal hmm. per se. That's my two two wood nickels. Shit, you gave a whole <laughs> bucket of nickels. <laughs> <laughs> ten fold driver, ten fold. Uh, my definition of marriage, I would have to say, it is a union between two people that is self renewing. Um, I uh, use a word that you use enduring, where. You can build, you can understand, be able to grow with each other and by yourself without losing that bond with each other. Um, it's also something that you you look to leave a you know leave a legacy behind and that's about it. I, I, I just that, That's about it. <laughs> that's it. I, I'm going to throw a wood penny on it. That's it. That's what's up. Oh, I thought you were crying. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> okay. Well, cultural. Is marriage defined the same in different countries, societies, that nature? I say no. Um, and we we actually had a, a podcast on this a while back. Uh, you guys can go look that one up. But uh, the thing about it is, in so many different countries, um, there are situations where men are allowed to have multiple wives. 
In other countries, there are women who are allowed to have multiple husbands. I forgot my can opener. I got open a can of worms already. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm keeping it simple. I'm keeping it simple. Well. Like I said, y'all, y'all can go back and listen to that one. Um, but I, th- I just think in those countries, because it's a part of their culture, that's why those people are able to deal with those situations because it's part of their culture as far as, you know, from the time they're born to the time they're an adult. So they have learned to adapt to those, you know, situations. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Um, okay. I'm agree. It, it, it's not defined the same. It, it, it's not. It's it's not. It's it's not defined the same in different cultures and societies. Um, because in America, um, things. People have gone to great lengths to continuously change the dynamic of what marriage is. Um, Sun Solek said people in different uh, countries deal with it. They don't deal with it. That is all they know. So for them coming to America and have and being forced to legally have only one wife, that's dealing with it. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the, that's just their culture. That's and that's been a cult. That's been something that's gone on in different societies, in, in for a long time. Um, so I, I just think that in different cultures, it can be defined in different ways. But I don't think it's defined in different ways. I just think it's approached in different ways. Right. We, you know, we in America uh, are all about uh, one man, one woman, or, or however it is defined these days. Um, now you can have two women married or two men married or whatever the case may be. I'm t- and I'm talking legally. Um, so, I mean, culturally, it is what it is. Well with you saying that so now that it's legal for um two men or two women why are we not fostering in more more than one wife or more than one husband why is i've never understood why that is just something that's so frowned upon um in in our culture um I don't know if people actually really know what it is or understand it, um, which is going to be a talk for a whole nother day. But the fact that we are accepting <laughs> so much, right. we, um, are. We, are. we are accepting so much. Why is the, the more than one um, a problem? Like we, we are a society that is greedy as all get out. But when it comes to a spouse, it's, oh, you can only have one of those. And you have to you have to stalk each other and and pick just out of in a previous podcast I said it's kind of creepy to me the idea of of the relationships and how they are how they are because you you essentially pick out one and that's my precious it's my precious it's mine <laughs> it's, it's kind of creepy the way it all goes down I mean I get it and it's it's what we know again. It's, just what what um so uh, and son are saying it's it's what we know um and it's all we know so everything else is foreign to us but if if we were in a different culture um we wouldn't view marriage the same i don't think uh, mm-hmm. and, and let me say this i love the culture that i was born into um for me to be able to choose because there are some cultures where you cannot um mm-hmm. so um, I'm going to say that right now. I, I love the fact that I can choose, uh, um, but it's definitely a culture thing. Definitely. Yeah, totally agree with that. Yeah. Um, I, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I a think, whole different I think, podcast. A whole different podcast. It, it is a whole different bo- podcast. But just to answer that briefly, I, I, one of the key things that you put out there is just greedy. Um, 
And and I know people are some people out there listening to this is going to take that. Oh, so you just want more than one woman? It, that's not what it is. I, I think I think it's just that societies have come from men having more than one wife or women having more well, one husband way back in the days and somewhere along the lines maybe in Europe and then when they came over here you know whether they could afford them or not or you know people was insecure or, or whatever else they just couldn't handle that lifestyle anymore and then they just changed it and wrote it in the law somebody voted for that and it's like all right that's what it is i'm gonna trade lightly here <laughs> I'm not it lightly because you know the young man gotta go home. And, uh, <laughs> if I was a single man, from that perspective, I would say um, I think that people should have the freedom to make that choice, simply because it works in so many other different. Uh, societies and countries around the world. And I'm talking from a standpoint of building things, meaning building businesses, building families, uh, so on and so forth. It's not coming from a place of, oh man, I can do whatever I want. I, I need multiple women. No, I think that's a sucker role. Honestly. Mm -hmm. But if you're coming from a standpoint of let me build something, where I can leave generational wealth and uh, generational companies that go on and on and on and so forth that will always and forever feed my seeds. That's the type of stuff I'm talking about. But to jump back over here in the married life, I don't know if I agree with that. <laughs> 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 That's what I can't you stand you right now. Uh, I, I can't know, stand you right now. She's she gonna call me once once I get off. Okay. Oh, I bet she love is. You, love you. <laughs> so, religious, which book or doctrine is observed and upheld? Does this change the definition? Um, go ahead. Because I, 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 I was about to get irate. <laughs> You go ahead. You go right ahead. You go ahead. Um, one thing that blows my mind is, um, and, and, and let me put this out there. I'm not an atheist, okay? <laughs> I, I just don't follow what is written in these religious books like that. Um because people is like, oh, well, you got to do this and you got it's like, I don't have to get married in a church. I don't have to do all of these things that are in this book or whatever the case may be in order to have a functional marriage. Um, you it, it just doesn't have to be. I mean, because if, if if I look at 50 marriages and more than half of them are not under the cloth of religion and they have been successful for years and years and years. What is that book defining to me? You know, people right. outside of that marriage who are under the religious cloth, well, oh, well, that's God and that's this and that's that. It's like, how do you know that? Um, because you can look at marriages who that are under that religious cloth and that man or that woman is looking at their spouse saying, I can't stand that mother and, and I'm going to lop their head off. And it's like, um, what about this book? Do, do, doesn't this book tell you that you should not be thinking like that and feeling like that? So I was like, ah, whatever. You want to go next? Next thing? Okay. I, I would say from a religious standpoint, um, we, we basically have two versions going on as in the earlier version a man could have more than one wife um so on and so forth you know and then i'm not sure about the whole women having more than one husband <laughs> i'm sorry and that's not to offend anyone please don't be offended i, I just you know I they did stuff that. like that in egypt yeah, I, I didn't read that in the book but i, I could have missed that page so 
um, to now be in a, a world where we can only choose one person to be with for the rest of your life. Again, I just feel like that's, I get it, but it's kind of like you, you're cutting yourself short to the extent of actually building something. Because let's be honest, if you have two people building or constructing a building, for instance, it's going to take a little while, just those two people. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. But if you had more help to build that um, building, meaning everyone is focused as a team to get things done, you're probably going to get it done a little bit faster, a little bit more efficient. You're not going to be nowhere near as tired or anywhere near as tired um, because you have a team of people who are all on the same page as far as like what our goal is and how we are going to accomplish this goal. And again, that is nothing against one man, one woman, or whatever your scenario is. It's just that so many other things can be done if you have more help. That's my question. Before Phoenix jumps in here and responds to this. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. It sounds to me like you're talking about a marriage with a bunch of men because in 2021, you ain't getting no woman to build no house or no tower. Uh, let me be more uh, direct about that. I, I think that as far as like countries in Africa, right? Uh huh. We know that there are men in that society where they function with more than one wife. Mm -hmm. They can have as many as they can afford. And I've seen, you know, situations where, you know, these gentlemen are millionaires because everybody within their family, meaning their uh, other wives he have, everybody has a job description. Everybody knows <laughs> what they're supposed to be doing. And again, like I said, I'm not taking away from, you know, not saying a woman in that position couldn't do it or, you know, having multiple husbands. I'm not saying that at all. So don't don't get me misconstrued on that. But it's been done before. It's just that our society somewhere, someone said, well, you know what? I know that's in the Bible, but we're not going to do that anymore. Simply because my wife said I can't do that anymore. Or my husband said I can't do that anymore. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Oh so, man! Again, I, I I'm perfectly happy with my situation. Love you, <laughs> love you. Um, oh. again, just me being open to how the world outside of my country works is what I I'm conveying to people. Mm. So y'all ready? Are y'all ready? Go yeah. for it. Go on in. Go on in. Cause she's coming with her her flames on. <laughs> this ain't so, America, is it? <laughs> do it? So marriage, like four thousand three hundred and fifty years old. That's it. The marriage that mm. we know. That's right. It. Um, the way that we know marriage that has morphed into that happened around twenty three fifty BC. Mm -hmm. it was for the purpose of men being able to have legitimate children their heirs that was it in 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 other cultures when women would get married um it was literally giving her and saying um i pledge my daughter for the purpose of producing legitimate offspring it was solely for that purpose whenever it was converted to one man one but thousands of years, and for thousands of years before the church got involved, men and women lived in in units consisting of as many as 30 people. Um, and the women and the men um, functioned intermingling, mm -hmm. if you will. So, right. um, and and marriage essentially, again, was a contract of, and, and it was how families um preserved and and gained um land and power and uh, things of those nature um the whole marriage thing as it is today um 
hey, if this is your cup of tea, I ain't trying to piss in it. Don't come for me. My <laughs> 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 Hey, I'm just going to put that out there. Um, marriage tough. today, um, I think it's bred from um, that wanting to own. This is mine and nobody else can have it and you bet mm -hmm. not. And I think it's unhealthy. The way we view things at this point is unhealthy. Um, it, it breeds, like, think about it. Um, and even when you're not married, just the way we have been taught that relationships are, um, it, it is a culture of this is mine. And if somebody else tampers with it, I will kill that person or I will kill what I deem is mine. Um, I think that over the years, marriage and this institution of marriage have been in a way that is unhealthy and toxic um, because of the whole, I own it, this is mine. I think if people were more free to be like, you know, you are an individual and I'm an individual and you need to do what makes you happy and I, I need to be able to do what makes me happy, I think we would be more equipped to handle um, to handle things. Uh, uh, if we are getting married, because that's truly what we and what we want that's one thing but a lot of times i found that people get married because that's what one one person wants, hmm. and it's because it's what's expected so yeah that whole religious thing it got in there and it warped what marriage was in what it was intentionally for um when the church got a hold of it Whew. dropping a, a few dimes out there on that uh the thing there ain't you um, went, in, went in deep on that one. Deep that, deep. I, I mean, that, that that sounds logical to me. Um, I, I can't, I can't dispute that at all. Uh, yeah, I, like I, I get it. Twelve, fifteen inches. I mean, uh, feet of water over there. I gotta stay where it's like <laughs> five feet. Well, I can't yeah. stand <laughs> you stay and, in the you shallow know, end. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Love you, dear. Hey, if you want to join the conversation, text your name to the number below and we will bring you on to get your two wood nickels on this conversation. But <laughs> right. So morals, who, what defines within a marriage? Who defines the morality? So touching. Um that is another one of those things that, you know, go, going along with what you said goes along with um, how things have been skewed and transformed and all this, that, and the other. But um, I think the two people in that situation that should define the morality of it. Um, no one outside of that union. Uh, whether it's on paper or not, should define the morality of that marriage. Uh, because only those two people or those individuals involved in that situation knows what's morally right in that situation. Um, one of the problems that we have in these times is a, a, a lot of people, you know, and I'm pretty sure all of us have done this, we have an opinion on what other people do based on our opinions of what marriage should be because um, you have people out here who legally get married and they say, and you got people saying, Oh, well, I ain't, I ain't doing this. I don't need no paper to do this, that, and other blah, blah, blah. And then you have people who are not, you know, married by paper or whatever the case may be. And then you have people saying, well, shit, that ain't no damn marriage. If you know, that drug can get up and walk away anytime they want to, where's the morality in that? But again, the morality of that situation is defined by those individuals that's involved in it. Um, you also have to look at these church people who think a marriage is only morally valid uh, when it's blessed by the Lord, so to speak. And it's like, well, shit, if that works for you, then that works for you. One thing that I dislike about that is people get held to some some weird fictional standard when they get married in front of the church and the Lord and this, that, and the other. And it's like, 
every a lot of people that's around that situation, they they pretend that that this is so morally high on 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 the scope of marriage morality that they act like things that they do in their marriage are not immoral. So for me, whoever is in that situation decides what's moral for them. Mm -hmm. I'll say this. Um, I was actually having this conversation with a, uh, an associate of mine earlier today, and I, I hit you both up about it. But uh, just to inform the audience, he has been in a marriage situation for seven years going on. Mm -hmm. um, but they don't have legal marriage papers. They don't live in a state where uh, if you live with someone for a certain amount, you know, common law marriage automatic kicks in. But I was asking him how he felt about the situation. And he was like, you know, for me and my wife, we both feel like it's not necessary. Um, and he said, and the reason we feel that way is simply because we both realize that we're both human. Mm -hmm. And at some point, we may change and we may feel like this isn't what we want anymore. So he was like, you know, my wife was told me if things, you know, do change in between us, she don't want to have to go through the whole court system <laughs> to be on her way or, you know, that whole battle thing. And, you know, I totally agree with her on that. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I totally got what he was saying. I mean... You really don't need a legal document to make you stay with someone or love someone. If you, if it's in you to be with that person and it's meant for y'all to be together, meaning that's what you both want, then you will be together. So um, just shouts out to people who realize you don't have to bring the government or the state into your business to make you stay together as a couple. Phoenix. Agreed. Agreed. Um, what what I say is is a little, little bit later on in this conversation, so I'm gonna sit on it. I'm gonna put a pin in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> morality um, in with in a marriage again, both of you guys. It's just up to the individuals involved. It really is. I believe and so. I, I mean, my whole thing about. Uh, being married is again, it don't matter how many kids you got with somebody, <clears throat> how much materialistic things you got, um, how much this person does for you, so on and so forth. If you don't want to be with them, you're not going to do it. I know that there are certain situations where people stay together because of certain conditions meaning whether it be kids or financial reasons, they do it. And again, I'm, I'm not, you know, throwing rocks at those people. You do what you have to do. That's you and your situation. But my morality is I'm where I'm at because me and my wife have an understanding where we love and respect each other. Um, if that were the change, then we would make the necessary changes, I assure you. But um, I think that with any relationship, you have to have some type of morality, some type of morals, some type of, okay, this is where we, we draw the line as far as our respect level. And if you go beyond that to disrespect, then that's when things will change. Yeah. Um, before we move on from that, um, you know, as far as that, that piece of paper thing goes, um, you know, a lot of people say, well, hell, who needs a piece of paper, this, that, and the other? Um, not that I'm for or against how people consider, could define what their marriage is and what they need in order to, to consider themselves married. Right. That piece of paper came about because dudes was just up and leaving women high and dry. So to prevent women who... Uh, and we'll get into roles later on to prevent those women who were stay at home wives and stuff, just raising the kids from being left high and dry. That paperwork came into place. Um, 
and and you know just to stick with the morality part um if these people people went into it morally enriched and and respected each other i think that piece of paper thing would not be as relevant or as important as some people put on it because hey if we together hey hopefully we've we've come together and we a are able to build from the time that we join each other until we turn to dust or if not if we should part then I should take it upon myself if you bore my seeds to support you until someone else marries you or however the case may be. Definitely. So what roles are defined or their defined roles? Um, if roles are defined, who determines slash sets them intentions? Okay. <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> so, oh shit. I I think that traditionally um the role is the man is uh the provider. Mm -hmm. um, and the woman is the nurturer. Uh, that's traditional. Um but I what I have learned is throughout time, the man, the man is the face of, of the marriage, but, but he also um, goes home and he discusses things with his wife and they come up with a strategy together. Although she's in the shadows, um, she's still a major <coughs> part of, of, of the dynamic that, that is making the decisions and everything. Um, in today's society, women that um, go to work and men who stay at home, mm -hmm. and and, and I, I don't have a problem with that. Whatever works for you, right? Mind you, I don't have a problem with it. Um, I can only speak uh, from from for me. Um, my father, who I seen get up and go to work every single day, uh, told me to never take care of an able-bodied man mm -hmm. at all. My mm -hmm. father's views uh, about uh, relationships were um, a man takes responsibility for a woman that he is interested in. Uh, for example, um, when my first husband and I were dating, uh, he wasn't allowed to, to really come to the house or anything like that. Even after we got married and, and had a baby on the way, my dad was not a fan of of him spending the night in his home um so and and for the record we got married really young he was in the military and until we found our own spot i still was staying at home with my parents um that being said my husband literally was not allowed to come and spend the night with me in my my father's house because that was a no no because a man is supposed to provide for a woman however the flip side of that is when my brothers got old enough to date, they could have females come in and, and spend the night. Actually, one moved in with one of my brothers. And whenever I asked my father, why is this okay? He said, because they are the men of the relationship and they and it's their job to do the providing. And I was like, but they're not providing. You are still providing. Well, that's just the way I see it. I was furious. <laughs> <laughs> I was furious. It made no wow. sense to me. And um, and I remember I was furious with my mother because she was allowing it, but also my mother was in the background telling me and and let me put this disclaimer out. By no means was my mom docile and and meek and quiet at all. Um, my mother was more of my mother was more of the forefront than my father was on most situations. On that particular one, she was kind of meek and quiet, but she also was like. I don't mind you being with him. I don't mind, you know, him coming over. I don't mind X, Y, and Z, but this is your father's house. When she said that, I was like, so you don't get a say? And she was like, I say, but I don't get the ultimate say. Hmm. This is your father's home. 
Um, and I remember whenever I left my parents' home, I was like, I will never be in that situation again. I will never, ever be in a situation where a man is saying, this is my home and I have the final say. And what I say is absolute. For me, those roles don't work. Um, for mm. me, I, I feel like we are adults and we are in this together. So we're going to have to come to some kind of compromise um, to make it work. You're not going to have absolute power over me. And I don't care if I'm a stay at home mom and you get up and work every day and pay every single bill and all the mortgage payments up in here. We just ain't going to roll like that. It ain't going to work for me. Um, so, again, I think it's up to the individual, these defined roles, which is crazy to me. I'm, mm. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. Let me just say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, uh, I can agree. Um, I'm not a fan of defined roles, um, especially in these times, because one thing that we all have to realize is that when we decide to enter into a marriage, however people define it with or without paper, um, you are taking on a grown person who has pretty much been living in their life. Um, and what I mean by that is we, after 25, 26, 30 years old, after that, you are taking on a fully independent person. And for me, there is no way in hell, no way in hell, I'm going to take on a fully independent person who has been living on their own, has probably been married and divorced, had kids that are probably late teens on up. I'll be damned if we get married and you say that's a man's job. It wasn't a man's job when you was living by your goddamn self. And I don't want to hear that. Well, I have a husband now. Well, shit. I was washing my ass before you came along. I was washing my clothes before you came along. I'm not going to sit back and say, shit, that's a woman's job. You know, we can decide who's going to do what when. There are things that I do not expect you to do on a regular basis. There may be some things I don't expect you to do at all. But do not come at me talking about, oh, that's a man's job. Really? Okay, well, I'm a man my ass up out of here and you can take the garbage out by your damn self like you was before I came along. <laughs> Period. <laughs> um, Cold-blooded, Mike. <laughs> you say it's a man's job. Well, okay, well, shit, you can take your ass down to the car wash and drive your car through that motherfucker on your own. I'm not going to make you or expect you to pump your own gas when we both in the car and I'm in the passenger seat. Even if it's your car. But when it comes to roles like that, nah, look, we are in a partnership. Um, we are building together. We are way past those years. Now, if we were in a culture or society to where you were raised in your family to do specific duties as a woman, and I was raised to do specific duties as a man like they do in, you know, uh, well, we'll say in the we'll South, say. in Africa, Egypt, and in, in, you know, countries of those nature. If that's the culture that we grew up in, cool. But God damn it. If you go out there to work every day, I go out there to work every day. There is no. Oh, that's your job? Oh, that's your job. No. Nah. Because still to this day, whether at all, through my three damn marriages and however many relationships, trust and believe, washing my clothes is not your responsibility. And nine times out of ten, a lot of people can tell you, I side-eye a motherfucker that wash my clothes. Because you're not going to do it the way I do it, so it's not your responsibility. It's just not. <laughs> if you do it, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. 
but do it how I want it done. And if you don't like that, then don't touch my clothes. Right on. Um, but before y'all go on, I'm going to give out, give a shout out to uh, Blake in the Bradshaw area for shouting out our podcast. Um, they help double our YouTube uh, um, numbers. And um, yeah, so thank you for that. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And and after y'all uh, after y'all give y'all a little piece on this, I was listening to the chicken right chicken and rice podcast by Blake, and I, I want to throw something out there that I listened to on their podcast earlier. All right. So before I go, thank you, Blake, because I recognize or we recognize as a team what you did for us, and much blessings and thank you, my brother, for doing that. You did not have to do that. You associated with my homeboy and my, my real brother King, but for us, you don't know us, but you still did it anyway. So shouts right. out to you, King, for real. Um, so my spiel on this is traditional roles, me and my wife, we kind of take that, but not to the extent that, you know, it has been in the past, meaning I am the man of my house. My wife is the 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 woman of the house. I do the major providing. That means I take care of the major bills that go down in my house, meaning mortgage, car payments, uh, light bill, water bills, and whatever else she may want me to pay. Um, I don't mind doing that. She <laughs> so she wants me to pay. I feel That's like this, man. Me. As a man, you know, again, this is how I was raised. You mm -hmm. take care of the major things. Right. If you need some help, she has the funds because she's putting back. That's her role to help support me when I need help and for retirement. Thank you. Hey. Hey. Okay. Okay. But um, <laughs> I, I don't mind doing it. I don't mind doing it at all because, again, that's the way I was raised. That's how I saw my father take care of my mother and, you know, my siblings. And there were so many times where I'd be like, damn, dude, you you really go hard. Like, I never seen my father take a day off where he was like, you know what? Fuck that shit. I'm just tired. I ain't going today. You know, he, he just, he, by being in the military, he had his schedule, you know, days that he could take. But as far as, like, just not getting up and going hard and doing what he had to do to provide for his family, I never saw him do that. Mm. So my role as a man right now, I have that same mentality. Like there'll be so many times where I be feeling goddamn <coughs> sick, I be hurting, my head be hurting, whatever the case may be, and I don't feel like goddamn getting up, going to work. But then I think back, well, your father went. So that's what I do. I keep it moving, no matter how much I'm hurting or in pain or whatever the case may be. My thing is I want to provide the very best I can to my family. I want to see my son have the things I never had. You know, growing up, um, you know, as a young man being from Alabama uh, and being associated with such a large family, we were, before my father, uh, you know, got out of basic and all that, we were freaking poor, you know. But looking back on it, we never knew we were poor because mm -hmm. my grandfather always provided for all of us. And this is a man who had 14 kids Whew. and grandkids. Oh, so you know this dude went ham, you know what I mean? Like, I'll tell this one story and then I'll move on, but. My family, uh, there's a plant back in my hometown where the only thing you had to do was mention our last name, our family last name, and you instantly had a job. You didn't even have to go through an interview because they knew if you were associated with that family, you were a worker. You came to get your job done and go home. So I, I just feel like, you know, with all that being in my genes and being in my family history, that's on me to continue that that tradition, as they say. Now, am I saying that my wife, uh, with her career, 
is less important? No, not at all. You know, she has her own money. She, you know, pay her own bills, whatever bills she, she may have. But there's never been a time where I could be like, hey, babe, I need this. And she tell me, no, what you need? I mean, she she's so down of a person that literally when we first got married, we were so goddamn broke that there are nights where we'd be like, babe, you you eat because, you know, they ain't a whole lot. So I, I, I'll be all right. You know what I'm saying? Like when somebody loves you enough that they willing to go without goddamn eating for you. Mm-hmm. Oh, bro, you mm-hmm. got you a winner, son. Yes, they ain't too many people yes out here that's going to go without eating for you. Mm. Like, you know, they might sneak that damn candy bar. <laughs> 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 you know, you might have saw it, you might not have saw it. But, mm. you know, that's, that's one of the things I appreciate about her is she's willing to do that to make sure I have what I need to progress as a man. To go out there and get that's it, as up. they say. That's mm. what's up. All right, so before so, we move on, yeah, wait, well, wait, wait. Oh, you got something to move to? <laughs> no, I am not a fan of of traditional roles, but I was raised like that. Mm-hmm. I was raised in the traditional way. I was raised to to be at home and to cook and to cater and to do all of those things, and I do them to a certain degree. Um, but it's not because I feel like it's my role. It's just because it was something I was taught to do. I was taught to cook and to clean and to, and to be the peace in the home because it's hard enough for, for men of color out there in the world. So be their peace when, when they get home. Um, so I'm still not a fan though. Just, just that little disclaimer. All right. So, um, like I said, I, I was watching the, the chicken and rice podcast, uh, that's Blake and his wife. Um, and the topic of, of their, their, uh, episode today was, is my wife submissive? So Hmm. when, (laughs) when it comes to roles and how to define who defines them, is being submissive a role like for women, for men, like, is that a, is that a designated role in a marriage? Mm. I'll say I don't feel that people have this idea of when I'm submissive, that means I'm a freaking slave. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yep. And I think that's the wrong idea of it. It's like being submissive to me is being, you know, let me be in my natural energy, meaning I'm a man. I'm going to be a man. She's a woman. She's going to be in that feminine energy. Mm. I'm in my masculine. She's in her feminine. And neither one of us, you know, are are trying to be above the other because there are plenty of times where life itself uh, for us, there have been times where she's had to play the the leader or the lead role. And I've had to step back and be like, baby, I got your back. Mm -hmm. You know more about this particular situation than I do. So with that being said, you take the lead. I'll play, you know. The thing, the back, the background, and give you, you know, the support that you need, and vice versa. But as far as someone saying, you know, that you got to be like a, I ain't gonna say a dog or anything, or you know, lay down and roll over and all that. When your 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 spouse tell you to, I think that's that's crazy. Mm-hmm. You have to work together as a team to get things accomplished. So that means, for the for the most part. You play your your role as a masculine man or, or whatever you find to be your definition of a masculine man. And she plays her role as a feminine female. And again, that don't mean anybody got to bow down to anybody. Just play your role. Ooh. Mm. You said a mouthful right there. <laughs> Play, playing one's role, huh? <laughs> wow. Oh Lord. So uh this is this is one of those um what is submissive to that person. Right. Um and and I'm gonna say this. If one knows what role is theirs, they can play it. But a right. lot of times I have found that men that throw around that word submissive have not given out 
specific roles. Um, they they come to you for every single thing. You are their mom, their sister, their pastor, their doctor, their, their confidant, their, their finance uh, advisor. You are all of those things and you have all of those hats. But then when it comes down to something as small as uh, oh, I want to I want to be out here talking to another female in another female space. And I need you to be submissive enough to let me have that. Mm. I'm a man. So um, I, I think the whole submissive word is it's it's so misconstrued in so many ways um, on a regular basis, um, because. You're right. When people hear submissive, it is you bow down to me and you allow me to do what I want to do and you be OK with it. that is the, the very term of submissive is. Is is akin to a slave. I mean, let's let's just be real. The, right. the term submissive means you submit to me, period. Um, So it's it's a word I don't like. Um, and it's because so many people when they use it, it is for complete submission. You are going to submit to me and I am going to rule over you. And, and and not very many people are in a position to where they can understand um, the whole give and take of submission. So mm -hmm. I think that's something that um, comes with, with um, mind maturity. Um, how how it's actually meant to be between um, a man and a woman. Most of the time, people take submit and, and go the wrong direction with it. So it's a term that most women don't like. I'm gonna say that. Yeah, um, for the longest time, I was in that group of people in our society and, and particularly in our culture who thought submissive was you do whatever the hell I say, I, I whatever the hell I say do when I say do it. You don't ask me why, you say how, how, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, I, to my recollection, I was never like that. Um, um, and as I even got older, I came to hate that term because it's like, I don't want you bowing down to me. I don't want you doing what I say do. You are a grown up. Um, you're not my child. Um, so I never grasped the whole concept of submission, being submissive to me. Um, and you know, the more I traverse through life, I looked at submission as, you know, that, that BDSM stuff. Um, that's how I looked at it. Um, and then I, you know, I, I accepted it for what it is, where it is, you know, I'm the man. You let me lead. And, you know, you you you're you're by my side. You got my side. You got my back, whatever the case may be. But I, I, for me, I just don't like that word submission, submissive in a relationship because you're not beneath me. You're not above me. You're my equal. I may hold you in high regard, but. Did, at, at no time are we going to play, oh, I'm going to submit to you. We're not doing that. That, that Get out of here with that. Um, we, we grown ups. I, I have I have no, no right to put that type of ownership on any woman. So I don't expect any woman to bow down to me in any way. Um, I know people out in this world that I've come across think that I have that that type of demeanor or whatever. But trust and believe. I, I, I think a woman who bowed down to a man in that way in some situations are either in abusive relationships or they're just weak. I, and I don't I can't I can't handle that. It is what it is. I mean, because there, there are some women, there are some women out there who are in situations to where they are either in abusive relationships or or, or they just are weak because they weren't raised in nurturing homes or they lost their way somewhere or they fall into what they think they see and they lose themselves and and they don't have that inner strength anymore. 
I'm gonna piggyback off that a little bit. I I I, I feel that there's nothing wrong with a female being submissive to her husband. In regards of let me be your helpmate, meaning let's not argue and battle over every little thing. It's okay to have a discussion, but we don't have to then argue over everything. So I think sure. that some people, when they, they hear, you know, that, ooh, she just let him do whatever it is he wanted to do, or, you know, that particular decision in that situation, she just let him do or uh, make the decision on it. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Because the thing about it is there are going to be times when you as the man, you have to make the call. You have to make that decision. That's what you're supposed to do. But there are also times when you be like, you know what? I'm not in the best position to make the final decision on this. So that's when you have to step back as a man, take your ego out of it and let your woman make the call. Because again, she may know more about that particular situation or um, how to handle things than you do. So again, neither one of you is, is uh, weak for doing that. You're just stepping a, taking a step back and letting the, the person who has the best skills for that particular situation or that job Take the lead. So, and what I will say is this: women are naturally submissive, um, in a way that is not. I'm gonna let you dominate me, but we will sit back and we will let a man lead if he knows what he's doing. If you are, if you are in a relationship and you are and you are doing the things that make us be able to relax and and say, okay, I know he can handle that. I'm going to sit back and I'm going to play, uh, as sons say, my role. Um, I will, women naturally uh, <laughs> will sit back and, and be submissive. Uh, and and when I say sit back and be submissive, I mean, we'll naturally let the man lead. It, it's a natural thing for, for most women that I know. Um as long as men aren't running around saying those crazy things, like you better submit to me, you got to do this. <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> it's a natural progression that happens in a relationship between people. There's always one that is going to be more dominant, um, but not in a not in a way that that makes one feel defensive. Um, and I think that's where the the arguments come in. It's because one feels the defensive and has to and feels like they have to stand their ground and those are the relationships where somebody is wanting wantingly wanting to be dominant over someone when that's not an issue as son said when there is a person that's saying i'm not really good at this one so i'm gonna let this person step up i'm gonna let this person handle it um i i can say this there are there are situations that uh, require me to to speak up and handle things, and then there are situations when I will sit back and I will let him handle everything. Won't say a word. Right. I might not agree with it, but I still don't say anything. Now, when it blow up or backfire and it don't go the way they think it's gonna go, then I just be sitting there like that was dumb anyway. But I let you do it because you mad. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah, um, we're going to get off of this. Uh, we're going to blame the chicken and rice podcast, Blake and his wife for that. But <laughs> <laughs> we, we gonna, this is going to be a separate topic because we can keep going on and on. Um, but the last thing I'll say about that before we move on. Um, some dudes are not verbally putting women in a place to where they're submissive, their actions uh, do it. But I'm going to leave that alone because it's, it's going to be too much. But moving on. Mm -hmm. Intentions. Why are you seeking to be married? Why the f why, why are you married? <laughs> I'll say the reason I wanted to get married was I wanted to first, I'm not going to say be like my parents. Because they, they had their marriage and they had their own situation. I, in my opinion, they had a very successful marriage, 50 some years, married to the same person. In my book, it's successful. Um, I had been married again before, and 
I'm not even going to say that was a failed marriage because I learned from it. And again, she learned from it. It was just a learning experience marriage. Right. Um, but I always knew that I wanted to be married. and I wanted to have a family. I wanted to have someone, you know, to, to grow old with, as they say. Um, I wanted to have someone to build something with that's, that's lasting. And again, for our seeds or seed to have something, you know, once we both left this plane, he can have something, you know, that he can carry on into the next generation. But I want somebody to love, really. You know what I'm saying? I'm a very loving type dude, you know? I, I love women, and I, I, I'm pretty sure my wife loves me. Um, but anyway, that's I like, I like how you those put are that. my reasons. I like how you put that. Appreciate it. You, you said, I love women, and I know my wife loves me. Damn right. <laughs> <You're laughs> People get your ass. I'm just saying that I'm, I'm attracted to women. That, that, that's the point that I'm making here. Plural. Plural. Huh? Right. Plural. You, know, you know, growing up before I got married, I love. Oh, okay. Love, let's, yeah, let's, let's. That part. He knew where you was going with that. He uh, knew where you was going with that. Anyway. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> well. Um. Uh, yeah. Why? Okay. I'm currently not seeking to be married. Um, why did I seek to be married when I, before the first time I did is because that's something that I wanted deep down in my heart. Um, I didn't grow up around a lot of successful marriages. So I wanted to be one of the first that I knew that had a successful marriage. Um, I wanted to have the whole wife child you know i wanted all of that um so that's why i sought to be married um excluding the first time um the second and the third time it was pretty much the same thing but as far as to answer why are you married i'm like i can't say that I can't answer that part, but what I can say is I refused to stay in a marriage that was not mentally, physically, and emotionally satisfying for me. Um, cause I, I, oh, well, you ain't give it a chance and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, hey, then I'm looking at people like, why are you still married? It's like, you're not fucking happy. Um, you, you, you don't sleep in the same bed. You don't do anything together. You don't love the joke. You have love for him. And it's like, why are you married? And, and it's like the, the, the reasons that they give, some of them I could understand, but at the root of it, it's like, isn't your peace of mind more important than staying married to a person, whether it's on paper or not? Isn't your peace of mind, your self-worth, your dignity, isn't that more important than being in a marriage that is not fruitful? Okay. Oh, definitely. Well, Go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Uh, I, I would definitely agree with that. I mean, the thing about marriages is, again, not all of them are going to last the test of time. It's a proven fact. Check out the divorce rates. Um, but I think that there are some people who, for whatever reason, allow themselves to stay in those situations, whether it be financial or keys or whatever the reason is, they choose to stay in those situations. And again, that's their personal choice. But I think at the end of the day, they really have to ask themselves, you know, what is the cost of my happiness? Yes. Because, again, I think that love is, we can all say, yeah, I, I, I love this or I love that. And I, I love this person, and, you know, to the end of time. But in all actuality, you have moments where the person you love might not love your ass. 
that part. They might not love you like you love them. Mm -hmm. So um, I think at the end of the day, it, it comes down to, okay, I might not love this person, but at least do I respect them? So if, if you are in a situation where at least you have respect, I think that may be some of the reason why people stay. But again, I think people have their own reasons. But the bottom line is love and respect kind of go hand in hand. And sometimes they don't. So again, they may work and may not work. But why stay in a situation where you know you're not happy? Well, for me, I didn't seek to be married. It wasn't on my agenda. I honestly didn't want to be married. Um, I I still feel like um, it's an unnecessary thing um, as far as paperwork goes. Uh, uh, I I can honestly say that um, the first time I got married, uh, it was a it was what I was supposed to do kind of situation. But I did love, I did love him. I, I honestly did love him. Um, it just wasn't the, again, it wasn't a mature. Love. It was, it was a, it was a childlike um, love, and it didn't work. the The second time I got married, it was, it was for what I deem the right reasons. Um, it is because it was somebody that I was equally yoked to as far as building and 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 making it wasn't a oh I'm I'm in love and I'm I'm love you and this is it was a let's sit down and talk about this and let's see where we gonna go because it, this ain't based on love. It, and and it, it just wasn't and um it's it has worked out in the sense of we make great business partner, great business partner, but because it wasn't built around the whole love concept, it, it works more um, as a really great friendship. Um, and we don't have all of those other issues that, that other marriages have. It's a coming if you if you hear then you hear and if you decide you want to go do something else for whatever reason then go it's it's not a uh traditional marriage i guess you could say and it and it works for us um it, it's it's something that i just feel like um it is what we both uh what we both needed in order to function because he has been married twice before um, and it didn't work. And it's because it was based in love with you and I want us to be together forever type of fairy tale thing. And and that's that's just something that doesn't work. Um, so I'm for functionality reasons at this point. Mm. Yeah. Be like that sometime. Yeah, dude. Next, what are the benefits of marriage? Tangible, <laughs> intangible. <laughs> <laughs> um, financial stability. Um, and it doesn't matter if if the man is the breadwinner or the man the woman is the breadwinner. Um, you know, people are getting married for financial stability. I mean. We are in a time where a lot of people's incomes are not enough to sustain a comfortable life. Um, so some people may be like, hey, you know, we've been kicking it, whatever, whatever. Um, they may have this conversation or they may not have this conversation. The joker might be like, hey, shoot, this joker making blah, blah, blah. And I'm making this. If we get married, we both making this. And maybe I can grow to love this person or whatever the case may be. How, what, whatever that equation is in their head. Um, it doesn't have to be a conversation. It, it could just be what it is. People are getting married for, for, for that reason. Um, people are getting, I mean, yeah, that's the biggest tangible thing that I can, 
that I can say for fi financial stability? I say, um, I feel that people again are from the time our grandparents were getting married to mm -hmm. now, it's a whole nother scene of marriage. The people are different, the times are different. Um, back then, and this is just my humble opinion, back then, uh, couples got together strictly on love. And what I mean by that is, you know, there are there are times when I'll take my grandparents on my mother's side, for example, again, having 14 kids. Um, mm -hmm. My grandfather was a uh, World War II veteran. Um, so he and my grandmother knew each other before he went off to war. Um, so my granddad was like, hey, I'm going to go here. I don't know if I'm going to make it back. Um, love you. Do your thing. <laughs> I don't know if I'm coming <laughs> back. So, you know, we'll recontinue if I make it back. So anyway, my grandmother did uh, actually meet someone else uh, while my grandfather was gone. Um, they had a child together. Uh, I, I never did get the details if they were married uh, or what the situation was exactly. I never did get a chance to ask her. But anyway, after my grandfather came back from World War II, you know, and found out that the woman he loved is with somebody else, my granddaddy did his thing. So mm -hmm. he ended up having a, a child. So mm -hmm. by the time the smoke cleared and, you know, they both were in a position where they could come back together, um, it, it basically came down to them getting married, having actually 16 kids, but two, two died. Um, and they were able to to build something based strictly off of love because I'm pretty sure back then my grandfather was not making a whole ton of money. <laughs> so back then, I think, you know, people did get married strictly because of love. But nowadays, because of our current situation and the times that we're in, people are getting married not strictly based off of love. They're looking at the other church. A person like what can we do together or what can you provide for me that I can't provide for myself and it, it's sad to a certain extent but on the other hand the flip side of it is have you checked out the cost of god dang living nowadays <laughs> crazy out here in these streets so I, I understand why people you know choose their mate uh off of their financial situation. And mm. again, you know, I'm not judging you, but I think that that's, that's not going to end well in certain situations because, you know, if you strictly marry somebody for financial gains and if they are sucker, sooner or later, they're going to wake up and realize what's going on. But, um, well, I don't know. I don't know if, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. Um, I'm just going to say it. people get married for, for different reasons. I, I think that, you know, as an individual, you have to make up your mind. What, what can I build with this person that we both benefit? Mm -hmm. As long as you're both benefiting in a positive way, do your thing. But if there's only one person benefiting in that uh, situation while the other person is coming up short, I don't see that going a long time. Gotcha. I I wonder, for me myself, um, from from my perspective, I wonder if your grandparents were the exception to the rule. Because if you actually look back, older generation in the marriages, how many children did they have outside of their marriage? Like, if you truly love somebody, you ain't gonna go out doing all this. Because they look at, it, especially in our community, they stayed together. But how many illegitimate children did the husband go out there and make? You know, how many yeah. how many mistresses? Because back in that day, people had mistresses for 15, 20 years. Like, mm. I mean, if you really just look into it, um, it, it, it wasn't a it, and and I and I can recall the older women um that I was around, 
be like, oh, well, you know, she was messing with Roy L for 42 years and he he was married for, for 40 of them, you know. <laughs> it's just, you know. <laughs> it's, um, I have I I have looked at and I have actually, you know, taken the time to do a little research on it. Um, and there were a whole lot of illegitimate children from from back in the day. Right. Back in the day, they they literally were getting married for the practicality of things. It was he's gonna be a good provider and she gonna rear my children for my name to carry on and she gonna make a good home. Um so not saying that more people weren't like your grandparents. That's a wonderful, beautiful story. Um and, and I'm glad that they had that. But the reality of it is back in the day, then then men was catting around and the women they were catting around too. Um they just weren't in a position to where they should be having children that were not their husbands. But let's look at it. How many right. great aunts and great uncles that you got don't look like the rest of the group? <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, you know, let's just be real. They just mm-hmm. didn't. Divorce wasn't a, um, divorce wasn't a thing so much back then um, simply because it was it, it wasn't part of our culture. No. It was we stay in it to make it work. It, it, a marriage was a house. When the light bulb goes out, you don't throw the house away. You change the bulb. You fix it, in other words. Um, our it. culture taught us to fix it instead of throw it away back in the day. Whereas now, women that were getting cheated on are teaching us not to put up with X, Y, and Z. And those men that were miserable with that woman, so they was out cheating, Was tell, they taught their sons, don't stay when you ain't happy. That's the difference. It's, it's not because we're not marrying for love anymore because that wasn't the case back then either. It was, we are being taught that it's okay to throw to throw it away at this point. We're not being taught that you work it out and you work on it and you see what, you, you see if you can work it out. Because honestly, the way we are now is, uh, nah, this ain't working for me. I, I don't want this no more. I'm done. Mm. Um, whereas back then, it wasn't practical for them and it wasn't part of the innate uh, relationship for them. It was we get married and all that. Hmm. Yep, that is true. Um, so I, I guess it sounds like to me that the business benefit the marriage was um, um, building resilience. Yes, because definitely. I mean, if you have women getting married and you know they're teaching their daughters not to put up with that and and men teaching their sons not to stay in situations like that then that's about it um me being a child of of you know what you were just talking about when i look at what what was the benefit to that okay well he had a son she had a son. Uh, so I don't know, but they weren't married. So I, I just, I, I really can't, I don't know. Um, but as far as other benefits, um, hell, you, some people, intangibles are, you're not lonely. Uh, you have someone to, uh, a person that's close to you that can lift you up and stuff like that. Um, I mean, the, I think the the benefits that are that do come with marriage, whether it's on paper or not, are oftentimes overlooked because of the the way marriage is these days. I, I don't think people are are looking at those those finite benefits to marriage like they used to. It, it's it's just. I'm, I'm going to get married for, for whatever reason. And if it works, it works. If it don't, it don't. Gotcha. I can totally, I, I can totally agree with that. Um, definitely. Uh, I, I think that the tangible thing, um, benefit of marriage is you're not in this world all by yourself. You, you have a partner, you, you have, someone to help you carry that load. Um, and and most part, you have 
somebody to share your life with. The the good, the bad, the in between, it, it makes it easier. It makes it makes what you're carrying easier. I think that's mm-hmm. the greatest benefit of marriage, uh, period. Is that when I have a really hard day, I can I know when I go home, my husband is and I can say, Whew, this and this happened today and he is going to listen and he is going to give me advice or he is going to look at me and say she just needs to get it off her chest she don't even really want to talk about this it, mm-hmm. it's having that person that really knows you and, and can give you what you need when you need it but um Santos you probably want to jump back in there but before you do that 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 all that's all good if the person that you're going home to is not a jackass um, and, and what I mean by that, again, whether your marriage is on paper or not, um, does that person really respect you? I mean, emotionally and, and as a person and all, all of that, because if that person don't doesn't respect you like that, then there's no benefit to that. There's no benefit at all to that situation. Like, you know, some people are in these situations where. They don't care if they, they, their husband or wife on paper or not is out there doing whatever, whatever, just as long as they don't bring shit home that they ain't leave with. But, you know, some people take it too far. They're just too arrogant about it. And, and they, they, they walk with, they, they, they walk with in a manner that degrades you. Like you were saying back in the day, you know, you know. Mr. Wilson probably was over there with Miss Betty for 30 years. Ain't nobody know about it. And nobody, or they all knew, but nobody but, was talking about it because right. they didn't carry it like that. Right. But nowadays, it's like you got jokers who 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 do that and they just, you know, shit at the mouth with And it's like, you look at these people in this, in this situation, it's like, why the hell are you there? Like, what is it about? What benefit do you get from this? And sometimes you will find in those situations that they are financially leeching off of each other. There's usually nothing else there, especially if the marriage is not on paper. It's like Mm -hmm. y'all are just leeching off each other for no good goddamn reason. Um, If there's kids in the in the picture and it's whether it's on paper or not is. Oh, we doing this. We sticking here for the kids, which is detriment. It, it's it toxic for those kids because people act like these kids don't see this shit. They act like they don't know this. They act like they don't understand it. And then when the thing dev- dissolves, they look at the parents like, I don't know why you stayed. And and they oh, I just did it for you. And it, it's like no, you're not. Do- no, you, when you say we stay together for the kids, you're staying together to damage them when it comes to relationships period Mm -hmm. that's it that's it right there um i agree with that i mean the the thing about it is people stay together again for different reasons right um some being financial some being uh, moral support, some, some mean being, you know, they just scared to, to be alone. Um, mm, that one right there. Mm-hmm. That one hold a lot of people in a, in a situation. Yes, yeah. it does. And the thing about it is you got to realize, you know, on the bigger scale of things that you came in here by yourself, most likely you're going to leave out of here <laughs> by yourself. So, again, why keep yourself in a situation um where you know you're not happy and you know that the other person isn't happy, but you're willing to hold on because you're scared to move on. Mm. Um, I, mm-hmm. I know a person, I don't know them directly, but I know their son and their son told me that mm. his mother is the type of female that she would go from guy to guy getting married, but always having a guy in the background. So wow. she will be married and, you know, have this this man that she's married to totally in love with her, like, you know, willing to, to murk somebody if it came down to it for her. But she always had a backup plan in her mind. 
So she basically developed this pattern of she would be married for three or four years and then move on, then move on. So her son and other kids, you know, his brothers and sisters came in after the fact of him. And it's kind of like he grew up watching this. Oh. So to this day, he's not married. And he's, I want to say he's 30, 38. But he has no intentions of getting married. Because of oh. what he saw his mother take these men through. Like one guy, he said he actually told the guy, man, I hate to tell you, you know, you're my, my dad. You basically raised me. Um, and what I'm telling you now is strictly out of respect. Mm-hmm. And he's like, man, mom's cheating on you. So he was like, man, it, it, it broke my heart to have to tell this man that. Mm. But I knew that my mom was the type of female who destroys men's lives. Wow. <laughs> because <laughs> of her own damn insecurities. And that's deep. And that is. But so this he, is also something he allowed his mother to make him a victim to. Mm-hmm. He's yeah. a victim of his mother um, because of what he saw her do. He is he is traumatized and he is paralyzed with fear to open up to a woman and actually have a real relationship to to be married and to have that experience. Bro need counseling. Like, whoa, like he needed like yesterday. Um, I'm going to say that. Um, I've seen a lot of different types of relationships growing up. And and instead of me saying yeah, I ain't gonna do it because X Y Z, I I look for the signs. Um, I can say that I, I look for the signs. Uh, I know what I don't want, and I know what I will put up with, how I want to be. And honestly, if you don't bring out the best in me when I'm with you, at least eighty five percent of the time, because oh I can tell you right now I ain't no walk in the park all the time. But at least 85% of the time, if you don't bring out the best parts of me, what are we really doing? Mm -hmm. What are we really, really doing with each other? Because at the end of the day, being in a relationship is not hard. It's it's not hard. Uh, People make them hard. But yeah, bro, bro gonna have to get some counseling at 38. He needs to go and lay on somebody's couch and let that go. Because but just because your mama it. was, what what's up? Here's the kicker to it, right? The last re- relationship she was in, she was getting ready to leave the guy, but he dumped her first, and that's what made her fall in love with him. So yeah, see, she's, after she she's damaged you know, the show. That he was gonna dump her. That's when she was like, no, no, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. So she's still basically with this guy. To this day, even though she still again got another cat in the background. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's that's yeah. a kid. Yeah, that is. That I is. just cannot. Now I will say this for me. I I can't let somebody else's experience uh, uh dictate what I'm gonna do. Uh just because so-and-so's mama was a Mary Magdalene don't mean I'm going to be a Mary Magdalene. And if you can't get that through your head, you don't need to be messing with me. I mean, that's just what it is. It ain't going to change. And just because my last guy was a, a cheating, lying, no good dude, I can't bring that to you and put that jacket on you because you didn't, didn't deserve that. And, and I feel like if people cannot go into a relationship with a clean slate with somebody without dragging these old bricks from other stuff, then they don't, they're not ready for a relationship, but definitely not ready for a marriage. Definitely not. You cannot build a, you can't build a house on a broken foundation. You you can't. It's going to shift and it's going to crumble. So don't even do it. True. So what influences change people's definition of marriage? Is marriage taken seriously? Does social media play into it? Is it situational? Is one person married with while the other person is not? <laughs> oh, wow. 
I, I think that we're at a place now where people again are throwing out traditional marriages. I think that people to a certain extent, uh, once they get to a, a certain point in their marriage, they're like, Hey, either we're going to make this work or we're going to make necessary adjustments. So with those, those necessary adjustments, um, people have to tailor their marriages to make it work for them. So if you stand up here saying, well, I want my marriage to be like my mom and my dad's, but again, that was in your mom and dad's time. This is a completely and totally different time. But I think that people have to be completely and totally honest with each other about what it is that you want in a marriage. You have to say, okay, this is my A to, a to Z list. This is what I need. Can I see yours? And so forth and, you know, so on. You as an individual or as a, a couple, you have to decide what it is that you can uh, work with and, and build with. So if you know that this person is not going to be able to hit at least 55% of the things on your list or above, then that's probably not going to be the right person for you. Because if you got somebody that can only meet 30%, I can definitely guarantee you they're not going to be the right person for you. That's We're living in an age now where you have to mold your marriage and make your marriage work for you. And stop trying to keep up with the goddamn Joneses and what they do. That's their marriage. Right. They define their marriage. So concentrate on your situation and your project. You did? Agree. Yeah. Um, I think marriage is taken seriously in small doses, small situations. I think overall marriage with the way culture and society is moving, it's, it's more of a fad. Um, you know, especially when you got shows like 90 Day Fiance and um, say yes to the dress and stuff like that. I think people are going for the show instead of significant marriages in, in some cases. Um, I don't think social, well, it depends as far as social media. I think people, uh, depending on their circles and circumstances, they, they use social media to piss off an ex or, or uh, piss off their family or something like that. Um, to that effect, um, marriage is situational, you know, as again, you know, people, you know, jump in it for money or, you know, just stability, uh, whether it's financial or emotional and stuff like that. And, you know, there's definitely a lot of play situations out there where you have two people in there, but only one of them is married. And, and that other person is just, just you just a bed warmer. And it's like, those situations right there, like, and, and they front for the crowd, like, they acting like they all in, but, you know, you got this person out here doing, like, like, son, so Alex was saying, you know, the lady got a husband, but got dudes on the side, it's like, yo, it be like that, I, I just, hmm. yeah. So, moving on to the next. So do we need uh, to be married to receive certain benefits? Monogamy, polygamy, is there a false ideal image of what marriage should be? Well, um, by society standpoint, yeah, we have to be married to receive uh, certain benefits. Uh, past that uh again it's, it's the individual i have i have I have a friend who absolutely refuses to do a lot of things unless she is married um i'm not cooking and cleaning for nobody i'm not married to i'm not you know i'm not gonna do <laughs> this in the bedroom and let put a ring on it i'm not gonna go with I, some people have that you have to marry me to get certain benefits and some people are 
perfectly fine with doing um, what they consider wifey things um, to the person that they're in a relationship with. Uh, I, I really think it's just up to the individual to what they um, what they consider a benefit um, on a personal level. But society wise, oh yeah, you're gonna have to be married to get any kind of benefit, any of. Yeah, I, I agree with that because let's just say, you know, for, for the people who believe marriage without no paper, um, you know, I can ha say this is my wife this year and throw on my medical benefits. But, you know, next time open enrollment come, I'm taking you off and putting somebody else on. So from that aspect, yeah, you need to be married to get certain benefits. Now, that whole I'm not cooking for somebody who ain't my husband. I ain't putting my head up in your drawers because we ain't married or I ain't doing this, that, and the other. My thing with that is, sweetheart or homie, you was doing all that nonsense before marriage was even on the table. So I don't even know why you're trying to stop doing it now. Go ahead and throw that in your mouth and just be quiet and rock with it. Because if y'all are together, whether y'all live under the same roof, or y'all, you know, going back and forth to each other's house. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear, well, I'm not doing that because I'm not your wife. Well, you wasn't saying that when we was in the backseat of my car, you know, six months ago. Like, get out of here with that nonsense. But you want me to take you out to eat. Well, I'm not taking you out to eat because you ain't my wife. <laughs> Cook that. <laughs> the nerve on that one, huh? <laughs> Is that hypothetical? <laughs> Very <laughs> hypothetical. Hypothetical <laughs> people. Oh. It's gonna well, be kind of hard son. for me to follow that up, but I'm, I'm gonna try. <laughs> <laughs> I I think that um, when you come into a relationship, uh, when you decide that you're gonna hold back a certain part of yourself from that relationship because you're not married. I think you're kind of setting yourself up for disappointment because how in the hell is a person supposed to sincerely get to know you if they're only getting to know part of you and hell just because you are married that still don't mean that that person is going to give you their all any goddamn way I know plenty of married men that say they their wife won't do this or won't do that mm, yeah they, they've, they've True. you know, and there are certain men that do the same thing. I ain't finna do that. It don't come on a plate. I ain't finna do that. <laughs> what? This, this is your wife. This is mm. your mate. This is the one you have chosen to be the person you're going to be with supposedly for the rest of your life. So why in the hell are you holding back on them? Why are you giving them only a sample of you? When you mm. promise to give all of you. Exactly. That blows my mind. It makes no sense in my world. That means don't be going in front of the, the justice of the peace or the past to talk about to have it to old to death do us part. And you lied. You broke the contract. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, what you got to no, do? This, no, no, this, that, and no. that, and this, and this, and then maybe I'll think about it. No, because none of that, none of that is in the contract. None of that. None of that is in the contract. Um, what you just Jeez. said is in the contract. I'm supposed to love you through sickness and health and all of those things, but nowhere in that contract do I stand up and say, and I'm gonna do X, Y, and Z under the cover and in the back seat and in the laundry. It none of this, it doesn't say that. I'm sick of not getting head from my wife. You knew how she was before you married her, is what I would say. I mean, you know what you bond? You know what you bond? That, yeah. that $75 contract that you bond, you knew what it was. You knew what it was. They got a refund and policy. That $75, that's, that's called no, the no, no, don't, don't, don't do it then, but now you won't do it. it like, how's that it, part of the contract? They got a refund policy. Then. Or or what kills me is women talk about, well, I did this Back in my day, my college day, I was a freaky dinky. And now that you married, you talking about no, I ain't, I ain't gonna do all that. What? Ain't no damn born again. What? No. <laughs> so, no. So, no. Oh, he even talked about no, she born again. No. Because I'm the woman no. of the trio, I'm going to say this. 
Lord, here we go. In our youth, we might be in our youth, we might be a little bit more out there and, and experimenting and enjoying life, but you have to realize that um some of most of the things um have been drilled in our head are our whole things. You, you was out there thoughting around. So once we get to that uh I'm over that stage, then I mean, for instance, you was running trains with your boy when you was in college and stuff. You you gonna call your homeboys and say, Let's run a train on my wife? No, it's just certain stuff you that's just don't different. do anymore once you get married. It's not that's different. different. If I don't see you over here licking that's, booty that's holes totally and Come gobbling on. up balls, that doesn't mean Oh, you you ain't doing what I want you to do. That just means I don't do that anymore. I've grown past that. I don't that ain't so, something I feel like. But again, it's something that you know before you marry that person. Let's be honest. <laughs> it's something you know before you marry that person. Because because she's gonna tell you, hey, I don't do X, Y, and Z, and I ain't gonna do X, Y, and Z, and then I ain't gonna change my mind. So don't be mad when you only getting hit and stuff on your birthdays and Christmas, you know, special holidays. You do That's what you not get part into. of the contract. That's why Miss Maybell around the corner been around for thirty right. years. You agreed to marry someone. You're saying I will yeah. give you what it is that you tell me you need. So with that means respect, with respect. Wait a that means if if Wednesday night I want point oh six, Wednesday night I deserve point oh six. <laughs> The no, third the night, first you of all, missionary, missionary, I missionary see, thing, then, then that's what it is. But the point so, that so that I I'm need to see is, the contract that y'all got because I didn't see that contract. That's not the contract that I saw. I want to see the exemption clause in the contract that you're talking about. If so you suck the, the if you <laughs> suck the meat in high school and college. Don't be coming at me when when we been in it five years talking about oh I used to do that back in the day I'm not doing it no more. What do you mean you're not doing it no more? Okay, so you you could do so it with we've them. Been who, in it for five you can do years. it with them who who gave mm -hmm. you absolutely nothing but meat. But mm -hmm. me, I gave you my life and I give you everything that I am. You can't do that for me. Explain so, that one to me, please, because I am full ears. I I'm not asking you to suck, suck gerbils out my booty hole. Don't. <laughs> so this is the thing if I've been with you for five haven't done it and we having a discussion and it comes up oh yeah I did do X, Y, and Z you know when I was younger <laughs> um yeah yes Miss People he said yes that's what he said um if it comes up later on that I used to do it but I haven't done it for you in five years why are you mad about that because first you know, of all, why would that be? All right, go ahead. Why would that be ahead. upsetting for you? First of all, first of all, I'm not being with anyone. <laughs> we on a high level right now. So yeah, Richard. I'm not going to be with anyone who does not do it at all. Period. Now, if we got together and before we call ourselves married and you was doing it and then we later on two, three years or whatever, six months down the line, oh, I don't want to do that no more. I think it's beneath me. I've graduated to Bougieville. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I need you to show me the exemption clause in the contract. Now, unless you get locked on a regular basis, and I want to keep my, I want to keep my meat. I don't want to walk around with a stubble. Cool. But other than that, you gonna suck to me. The thing, because this is the thing. The the wonderful thing about us is, at any point in time, I can say I don't want to do something anymore. I don't owe you anything. I'm not obligated to do anything. Um, other than I married you, and I said. Uh, through sickness and health and da, da 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 and nowhere in those vows that I say I'm gonna do porn star stuff for you anytime and every time. I, nowhere did I say that. So as long as I am upholding my vows, you shouldn't be mad. But at any point in the relationship, you say I no longer want to do X, Y, and Z, and because it's your choice, you should be mad about that. That's if you come home and say, "Look here, I know I was paying all the mortgage payment." But I don't want to do that anymore. I need you to pull this much of it. She shouldn't be mad about that. Okay, no problem. It shouldn't be. Well, you've been doing it. Why you don't want to do it now? Because I don't want to. I want to I wanna be off three days a week in, instead of working seven days a week. I want to be able to take three days off. And, and in order for me to be able to do that, I need you to pull X, Y, and Z. 
Why is it? Why is it not looked up like that? What you say? <laughs> Uh, I'm going to say this, this bit and I, I'll move on. We, we could be here all night about this. We can. We, we on a time then. <laughs> my thing is this, right? When I said I do, I said mm-hmm. I do with everything that I am. Okay. Now, I told my wife before we got married, at any point in this marriage, if you feel like I'm not what you want, I'm not what you need, I don't do it for you anymore, just let me know. And you can go your way and I can go mine. No big deal. But again, if I'm going all in, I give all. I'm not going to go halfway in and be like, you know what? No, I don't think I want to pay the mortgage this month. I don't think I want to uh, fulfill my, <laughs> my role, my defined role this month. Uh, I think mm. I'm going to take half the month off. So let me uh, hit you back in about 20 days and I'll see how I feel about it. No, don't give me part of you or a certain percentage of you. There, there should be no man that is married that his wife is continuously telling him, no, I got a headache. I don't feel like it at night. There should be no reason at all when a man is acting to be intimate with his wife, except for those times. And you know what times I'm talking about. It, it shouldn't be a, 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 a continually no, 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 no. Ain't gonna do that. Ain't gonna do that. What? But you did it back then. And them. Oh, the Lord, where is so my can opener? Stop, stop. You That's better all stop. I'm saying. That's all no, I'm no, 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 you be quiet. No, 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 no. no. Phoenix, you be quiet. You be quiet. You be quiet. You be quiet. Phoenix, be quiet. No. And it's now, just, it's the same thing on the flip side of that. Men shouldn't be able to tell his wife. No, oh, Lord. You, after you already said you're going to do it and have done it. What? I've seen the color purple, and I'm just going to say this before you open your mouth. No, Miss Sophia, no. I'm not talking about, you know, taking it or taking anything. I'm saying if you're in a loving relationship. She, she know what you mean. No, seriously, if you're in a loving oh, relationship, oh, like intimacy Lord. is just as much as part of that relationship. It's my church man. It's my church man. I'm, I'm ready to listen to this one. Go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead. And then I'm gonna leave it alone. Go ahead. It is my body wholeheartedly that I have agreed to share on my terms. And if you don't like that, then get on. Your body is yours to share with me how you see fit. If I say I don't want to suck your penis, then that's just what it is. If you say you don't want to lick my plate, then that's just what it is. As far as if somebody says, I don't want to do that anymore, how dare you say, well, you was doing it. That is the equivalent to saying people were treating you poorly and I put up with it up until this point and from here on, I'm not going to put up with that no more. No, you don't have a right to say that because you let me dog you out in the past, so I'm going to keep dogging you out. No, I don't want to do it anymore. You know that's I don't want to do it anymore. You know that's different. That's just you know that. very important that's, point. That, I don't want to do it they're, anymore. They're not even in the same ballpark, Phoenix. It, they're not even in the same ballpark. What I'm saying because is, we're it's talking my about being intimate you with your your me. loved one. And again, I'm not saying that you got to do it every time. I'm talking about. I don't have to do it no time. No, I don't have to do it. What hell? If you no you can't time. do it no time, then your ass need to get the hell on. One of us need to get the hell on. <laughs> this is the thing. <laughs> That's just what it is. But One of us need to get the hell on. Because That's again, if you it's, sign it a contract is. saying I am going to be your spouse and I want mm-hmm. you to only sleep with me and only me, then that means you're saying I will take care of your needs. So you know what I'm saying? Chantel says, my definition of marriage is a legal yeah. and binding union between a woman and a man based on a strong sense of commitment, love, and respect. Sanji says, the meat always has a say. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I want right to right comment on, on that. I want to comment on that. Go ahead. I agree and disagree. All right. If as a man or as a woman, you expect that one person to be that one person and go nowhere else for those resources. Within reason, you bet not be saying no on a regular basis. Now, the caveat to that is you might have a migraine. You might. You might have fibroids. You might. You might not be in a goddamn mood. You might. You might be too damn tired for whatever reason. You might. The man might have the same problems. The woman might be like, look, I had a rough day. I need you to bend me over and, 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 and you know, knock the wind out of me. She ain't trying to hear you say, baby, it just ain't happening today because I ain't getting up. I'm bent over this couch. I bet not hear that out your mouth. You better come give me the meat. So a man cannot say, you better do this, you better do that. Because when she say, you better do this, you better do that. And you be like, oh, baby, I'm too tired. It won't get up. You better ask, you better ask um, um, Ricky around the corner for some blue pills because you're going to give me that. So it goes both ways, but it's within reason. It's in re 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 respect. You cannot right. demand that, right. but I'm at no that. point should either party be like no on a regular basis. Period. It was no that. for 10 straight months. Oh, shit. See that? Okay. <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> yeah, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. That, because that that that's to me, if it's no for ten straight months, that's a situational thing that does not even fit into what we were saying. It, it, it's just exactly it's a situational thing. And you know, that being said, it might be no because I don't feel attractive to me or I it's a lot of things that go into that and, and it's a lot of reasons women may stop doing X, Y, and Z. I don't want to. I don't want to go down on you because whenever I go down on you, I feel my body fold in a certain way, and I feel like I look like a blob, and I don't want to do that. And I don't want you standing over me because this ain't no porn video, so we're not gonna stand up while you shove your meat down my throat. So no, we're not gonna do that right now. I don't want to do that. No, no, no. You need a subcontract. <laughs> you need a subcontract. I can't stand you. I'm moving right along before myself. you get yourself in trouble tonight. Sexy. <laughs> I don't feel like doing this and that and that and this. Then you need to subcontract. Me. No, you need to be a loving hey, husband. Hey, um, I got a situation over here. You, may you be need able to be to a loving. You need to be a loving husband <laughs> and go through that worst that you signed up for in that contract. Y'all like to refer Oh to. hell no! Moving on. Moving on. Hell no. <laughs> okay, moving on. Moving on. Yeah, move on. Because that's 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 just that's the look. That's pushing the goddamn line. Uh, monogamy. Uh, we kind of touched on that earlier, um, so I don't think we need to beat that in the head. Uh, nah. Yeah, I don't think we need to beat that in the head. Uh, yeah. So let's let's just move on to this one. Uh, polygamy. Um, I mean, we're we're going to say polygamy for a whole different podcast. That's all. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> hey, Chantel, like your subcontract. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it, Chantel. Oh, man. All right. So is there a false ideal image of what marriage should be? Of course. Hell yeah. Of course. We all we mm -hmm. all understand that. Uh, yeah. marriage is marriage is uh portrayed to be sunshine and rainbows and the happily ever after um and that's not that's not at all what marriage is so that's definitely definitely uh, yeah because you you got too many situations to where women is are, are sitting at home and feel like prisoners but you know when they when they out in public they gotta you know put on a happy face and men men too you know yeah they they are miserable within the, within it and then they will get out in public and act like she is the best thing since sliced bread mm -hmm. i mean the thing about it is a, a lot of us grew up the times when you know the coffees were on you know we we mm -hmm. saw the the two doctors in one family and you know what was it five five kids five six kids whatever mm -hmm. 
We saw that growing up, and that's what we wanted, some of us, as kids. We Even though we couldn't relate to that shit at all. Well, you know, we, we didn't come up in you know, that kind of household, but <laughs> the basis of it, the basis of it, uh, which meaning a happy marriage, that's what we wanted. Mm-hmm. But again, that that was a fantasy world <clears throat> to a certain extent. Not saying that it can't happen here today, but um, that requires a lot of work. Mm. And I think that people have just gotten to a place, you know, now where they don't want to do the work. And like, you know, and again, I, I've told people, you know, the thing about my marriage is me and my wife both realize there are no fucking days off. There are no mm. days off. We we can't show up, you know, or wake up in the morning like, you know what, I don't, see, I don't feel like being married today, <laughs> shorty. So, you know, I holler at you on the flip side. There, there is none of that. <laughs> Every day, from sun up to sundown, even while you sleep, your ass is married. Mm. Yes. So you, you definitely. We both realize we can't make each other happy to a certain extent. Like I don't look for my wife <laughs> to make me happy. I have hobbies for that. She don't look for me mm-hmm. to make her happy. You know, she has things that she do that make her happy but we just agree that we have happy moments together Mm. like anything i can do to you know brighten her day you know i can't say that i'm on it 24 7 hell no not but there are times when i do think of her where i do go out of my way to you know put a smile on her face even if they're just stopping at the damn uh gas station to buy her favorite candy bar that's 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 part of it is work mm. yes indeed but you know some things are still worth the effort yeah i guess so Ooh-hoo. chantel says like having a split personality if you marry to the wrong person boy yeah, yeah, don't yeah. i know it people, <laughs> people. boy don't i know it mm. I think people forget that uh, they should treat marriage like a verb. <clears throat> it's an action word, and it mm. takes action every single day for it to work. Is Indeed. it time to change the definition of marriage? No, not not. I think everybody should have their own definition of marriage. Um, it shouldn't be decided uh, socially. Uh, because everyone's idea of it is different. So the definition of marriage should be whatever those two people deem it to be between them. I agree with that. Yeah. Again, if you, you, this is not the ideal world. Again, this is in the 60s, 70s, 80s, or even the damn 90s. We as people, as couples, or, or whatever it is you got going on, you have to define that relationship and make that relationship work but the the most important thing about it is i feel is you have to be open and honest and i think we've just gotten to a place where people don't want to be honest they feel like let me put on my representative and let me shoot you these lies to keep you uh in a place where i can maneuver you how i want you or how i need you to be maneuvered so I'm not going to give you that that real, real, that 100 percent or that that, you know, all the truth and nothing but the truth. You just got to get back to being real, man. Shit. It's not a crime to be truthful. Not yet. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, nah, like you like you said, it's not an um, ideal world, but you can try your best to have an ideal situation. So. Um, with that being said, you, you just have to do what works for you, uh, limit your criticisms of how someone else is, is maneuvering in their situation. Um, support people that, that are open to support in their situations, because some people are, are literally stuck in marriages, which to me, I don't understand. Um, but depending on some circumstances. Like if you're able-bodied 
and you just there because you're there, why? Why? Um, but at the end of the day, you know, your definition of marriage is what it is. If you need a piece of paper to solidify that, then you need that. If you don't, you don't. My thing is this, the way the way society is set up, um, there's certain things that you cannot have if your spouse passes away if you were not married on paper. Um, there, there, there's little to nothing that you can do if somebody wakes up in the middle of the night and be like, you know what, I'm out of here. You know, if it, you know, you don't have that paper or whatever the case may be, and you know, you go off to work or you, you know, you travel for work, or you go on vacation or whatever, and you come back and the house is empty. You know, if you you're not on papers, there's nothing you could do. So hopefully, you have a person who who has that that moral compass, that integrity to be like, hey, this ain't working out. We need to split ways or whatever the case may be. So as long as you have the ideal situation for you, that's all that matters. Definitely. Well, again, we just want to thank everybody for tuning in with us. Uh, I know this has been a very interesting conversation, <laughs> to say the least. I don't know if we'll revisit it anytime soon because I know I'm going to hear about it when I get off of here. Meaning mm -hmm. my wife is going to call me and give me her two cents. But, hey, I am who I am. I got to be honest. <laughs> and that's all you can be, my brother. Um, again, thanks for joining the King and I Life podcast. Uh, um, hit us up on whatever social media, podcast platform, all that good stuff. Um, I was slacking today, but the next episode is going to be available tomorrow on whatever podcast platform that you are on. And that topic is um, the COVID vaccination. So definitely tune into that when it when you get the notification. So make sure you follow us on those podcast platforms and get that. Um, it's going to be an interesting conversation. We would love your feedback on that. So definitely when you when you hear that, hit us up on the on a Facebook page or Instagram page or wherever, and give us your thoughts on it. Appreciate it, people. Uh, most definitely appreciate it. And again, so uh, we want. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mm -mm. <laughs> I just want to thank uh, you know all the, the new subscribers and uh, new listeners out there. Again, we are continuously growing. I think we're up to twenty-seven countries now, if I stand correct. So again, to all those new listeners out there, we are very humbled and thank you for tuning in. And thank you guys for uh, participating, uh, Miss Chantel and Miss Sandra. Uh, we appreciate it. Yeah, and, and definitely if y'all have any topic suggestions for us, text us, inbox us, email us, all that good stuff. We are here for it. Um, we definitely appreciate all that good stuff. Um, with that being said, it's King and I Life Podcast. So touch the poet. Love y'all. We out. <laughs>